This Ampere-Maxwell law equation tells us that a magnetic field can be created by a current through a loop or by the time rate of change of magnetic flux. So we need an expression for both the current through that Amperian loop and the electric flux through our Amperian loop. And again, the Amperian loop is the loop that we represent inside, in between the plates of the capacitor. Well, if we look at our Amperian loop, and let's go ahead and label our loop. So this is our loop that we are looking at. And this loop, we have to find the current through it. Now, because this is a capacitor and in between the plates of the capacitor is a vacuum, the current stops at the plate. So we see the current here and the current no longer exists past the plate. Why? Because current is the rate in which charge flows. So charge, there is no charge flowing from the positive plate to the negative plate. That means that there is no current through the Amperian loop. So that expression goes to zero. That means the only way we could have a magnetic field is if we have a magnetic, if, if we have an electric flux that's changing with respect to time through the loop. So let's look at this expression, the time rate of change of the electric flux. So this is given by the time rate of change of the surface integral of the electric field and the area bounded by our Amperian loop. Let's represent the dot product between the electric field and the area differential as the product of the magnitude of the electric field, cosine of the angle between the electric field and the area of our Amperian loop, and the area differential of our Amperian loop. Now, if we just assume that the area vector of our Amperian loop is parallel to the electric field, this means that we have a cosine of zero degrees. Cosine of zero degrees is just one. Also, with respect to the area, the electric field is constant. And this means we just have the integral of the surface differential bounding the Amperian loop. And when we evaluate that integral of the surface differential, we get the time rate of change of the product of the electric field and the area of our Amperian loop. Since we want the Amperian loop at, to be located at a point in which we want to know the magnetic field, we know then that the area does not change with respect to time because the radius is just a constant 0 0.50 centimeters. So that means that the electric flux, the time rate of change, is equal to the product of the area of our Amperian loop and the time derivative of the electric field. So what is the time derivative of the electric field? Well, earlier we showed that the electric field is just equal to, well, let's take a look at what we showed it to be equal to. The electric field is equal to four times the charge on the plate divided by pi, the diameter squared, times the permit permittivity of free space. So let's put that expression right here. And this is 
what we have for the electric field now. And we need the time rate of change of this expression. So let's take the time derivative of both sides of this expression. When we take the time derivative of both sides of this expression, we get the time rate of change of the electric field is equal to, well, 4 is a constant, pi is a constant, the diameter is a constant, the permittivity of free space is a constant. So now we have dq dt. Oh, look at this expression, dq dt. What is that expression? Well, that's the time rate of change of the charge accumulation on the capacitor plate. And that is just the current being led into the capacitor plate. So now we have an expression of the electric field actually in terms of the current in the wire being used to charge the capacitor. So now we have all of the pieces we need to solve for the magnetic field. Let's take stock of what we have. Here is an expression for the time rate of change of the magnetic field in terms of the current, the diameter, and the permittivity of free space. Here we need that expression so we could find the time rate of change of magnetic flux. And we need the time rate of change of magnetic flux so we could find the magnetic field at a point on our Empyrean loop. Let's put all of these expressions together. Here is our Ampere-Maxwell equation. Which says a change of magnetic, a change of electric flux will produce a magnetic field. Let's evaluate the integral of our Amperian loop. Well, we know the magnetic field is going to be constant on our loop. So I'm going to use the version of the dot product that expresses the dot product as the magnitude of the magnetic field, cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the line of our Empyrean loop, times the differential of our Empyrean loop. And this is equal to mu naught epsilon naught times the time rate of change of our electric flux. So the time rate of change of our electric flux, we said, is equal to the area of our Ampyrean loop times the time rate of change of the electric field. Well, our magnetic field is constant. The angle between the magnetic field and any point on our Empyrean loop is zero degrees, and the cosine of zero degrees, remember, is one, and so we are left with the integral of the loop, which is just going to be the circumference of our loop, and that's equal to mu naught epsilon naught, the area of our loop, which is pi little r squared times the time rate of change of our electric field. And the time rate of change of our electric field is 4 over pi times the diameter squared epsilon naught times our current. Well, here I see a pi cancels with a pi, and an epsilon naught cancels with an epsilon naught, so we could simplify that. And on the left side, we have the product of the magnetic field times the length of our Empyrean loop. And being a circle, remember, the length of a circle or the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius 
of the circle. So we're going to use that in our next step. And finishing out this line, we have 4 mu naught times the current over the diameter squared r squared. As we said a few moments ago, the length of our Empyrean loop is the circumference of that circle, 2 pi r. And this is equal to 4 mu naught, the current, over the diameter squared times the radius of our Empyrean loop. And again, the diameter is the diameter of our capacitor plate. Let's simplify a little bit. So this 2 on the left cancels with the 2 on the right. This r on the left cancels with an r on the right. And what we have is the magnetic field is equal in magnitude to 2 mu naught i over the diameter of the capacitor plate squared times r where r is the distance from the central axis of our capacitor. And let's not forget the pi from the left-hand side. Let's now plug in the values so we could determine the magnitude of the magnetic field, which is equal to 2 times the permeability of free space, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, Tesla meters per amp times the current. We're given the current is 0 0.50 coulombs per second. Remember, coulombs per second is just an amp. Times the distance from the central axis of our capacitor, which is half a centimeter, divided by pi, times the diameter of our capacitor, which is 2.0 centimeters, quantity squared. So let's go ahead and simplify a little bit. So this pi cancels with this pi. This 4 cancels with this 2 squared, leaving this to be a 1.0. This meter squared cancels with the meter squared. A coulomb per second is an amp. That amp cancels with this amp. That leaves us with units of the Tesla. This 10 to the minus 2 cancels with the 10 to the minus 2 on the bottom. And when I plug these values into my calculator, I get that the magnitude of the magnetic field at a distance of one half centimeter from the central axis of the capacitor is equal to 5.0 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla.